Okay, I got a new one on now. So hopefully on Facebook, that's clearer when there aren't as many statics and freezes. I don't know why that was happening before. Uh, Facebook wasn't telling me exactly what was causing it, just that my frame rate was too low, but I didn't know how to fix that. So anyway, here we are on this new one. So jump on this one, jump on this chat. Uh, shouldn't be any as many clicks and pops and, and freezes on this one. Okay. So yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that's been going on. And I'm talking about God has been doing stuff to deliver cities, entire cities of people. Okay, is that better, clearer? Okay, so is, is the picture better? Is the picture clearer? Is it less, uh, less staticking and all the different kind of stuff? Let me know, because I'm trying to be sure that the picture is clear. So yeah, so it's been that kind of thing. And then I've been dealing with technical issues, been dealing with computer stuff, all week and all different kind of stuff. And so when stuff like that happens, I know what that means, okay? What that means is that, that there's an important prophetic word coming. There's something that God is trying to get out. There is something that needs to be said and the devil's trying to hinder as much as he can. Um, trying to stop it from happening. But we're going to press forward. We're going to do what the Lord says do. All right. So let's move on to today's live prophetic word. I know I seem a bit rambly, but there's a bunch of stuff I'm trying to do at once. I'm trying to make sure the live stream is clear. And I'm also trying to tell you about everything that's been happening today, because again, you wouldn't believe me if I told you all the stuff that was going on today. It's just been amazing what God has been doing, but it's also been sobering to understanding that God is speaking to generations, that there's so many Christians that missed what God was doing in 2020 and missed what God was doing in the pandemic and did not get in place and did not get in line that for some people, that's going to mean premature death. For some people, that's going to mean that they're so far out of the will of God that the devil's going to catch them out there unprotected or out from underneath the blood. Or he's going to catch them out there without their shield of faith up. And some people, for some people, that means that they're going out early. That's how serious it is. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to jump into today's live prophetic word. <clears throat> Let's say a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you, O God, for being able to hear from your Holy Spirit, O God. Thank you that your word is the most precious thing that we have, that we can't live by bread alone, but by every rhema, every word that proceeds out of your mouth, O God. So I must decrease so you can increase. So God, use me as you say fit, O God. I fill me with the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God flow through my mouth. Let everything said be what you want said that you might receive the honor and the glory in all things and that we might have a chance to hear your voice. Oh God, so we can obey and get in line with what you're doing. Let unbelievers be challenged by the glory. Let Christians that are not walking in the right level of glory be challenged to, to get, step up into where they need to be, oh God. And let the unclean spirits bow before you because you promised to send your fear out in front of us and that you would make all of our enemies turn their back on us Oh, God, so let anything unclean trying to hinder this broadcast bow before the name of Jesus. I thank you for it. And I believe you for it. Signs and wonders and miracles shall follow this. And I believe you to do great things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Amen and amen. All right. Today's live prophetic word is loose him. Today's live prophetic word is loose him. Very familiar topic, very familiar passage of scripture, but it's going to be some new stuff that the Holy Ghost is saying. That's, again, a lot of people that don't walk in the prophetic don't understand. The Spirit of God is the author of the Bible. He breathed on and through the writers of the Bible, but the Spirit of God is the actual author of the Bible. The Spirit of God can take a scripture that you've been reading for 20 years 
and open it up to you in a way that you've never seen before, in a way that you never thought of, okay, and show you new dimensions to that word. That's the difference between just reading scripture and, and getting a prophetic revelation on scripture. So even when you hear people read familiar passages of scriptures, don't tune out because there's going to be some stuff coming up prophetically that's going to speak directly to you. That's the fresh rhema right now, fresh breathed word of God. So we're going to read a very familiar passage. We're going to read in John 11, John 11, John chapter 11, the gospel of John is the story of how Lazarus got sick and how Jesus raised him from the dead and the things that happened around that and some things that happened after that. Very important. This prophetic word is aimed at some very specific people where this stuff is about to happen in your life. So whether you are watching me live or watching me on the replay, understand and know of a surety that these things are about to happen in your life and God is trying to get you ready for them. That's what this is about, okay? John chapter 11, verse one. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister, Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you and yet you're going back. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble for they have no light. After he said this, he went on to tell them, my friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. <laughs> then Thomas, also known as Didymus, which means twin, said to the rest of the, of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God who has come into the world. After she had <clears throat> said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor but he's been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. 
the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. In the King James, I said, loose him and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Uh, then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. And I'm going to skip down to verse 54. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved out publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. Okay, lot in there, lot in there, lot in there. Um, the the town, the village of Bethany that Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived in, today is called El Azaria or El Azaria because it's named after Lazarus. Now, the original town of Bethany's name it means house of affliction. Uh, house of trouble. It also means house of dates, dates like the fruit or house of figs, because there were a lot of almond, olive and fig trees in Bethany. But it was also called the house of poverty or house of affliction. After Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, they changed the name of the village to El Azaria or El Azaria, the place of Lazarus. Okay. Some of y'all are about to get a resurrection in your lives that is so strong, they're going to name streets after you. They're going to name towns after you. They're going to name cities after you. That's right. That's what's coming. A resurrection from the Christ that is so powerful is going to change the name of the city from where you're from. That's what's coming. So I want you to notice something, because many times when you hear this story, what you hear is about how the Lord stayed where he was until by the time he got there. Lazarus had been in the grave for four days. I want you to notice what the first thing was that Jesus actually said. That's John eleven four. 4. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. So the first thing the Lord told you is that, no, this is not the end. First thing he said was that this wasn't the end. He said, no, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Let's stop right there. <clears throat> if the enemy is attacking, and if that attack is heavy and awful, we have a great tendency to get mad at God. We have a great tendency to start to lose faith. We have a great tendency to say, why God, why? Jesus just told us why. Jesus said, whatever that attack is, no matter how intense, it's not going to end badly. It's not going to end in death. It's being allowed to happen so that God can manifest his glory. God is using what the devil is trying to do in your life as a, a vehicle to show forth his glory, to show his triumph and his power over the devil so God might be glorified, which also leads me to my next point, And that is that don't be listening to these people that tell you sickness comes from God. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> sickness come from the devil and sickness come from sin. If Jesus is the manifest presence of God and Jesus is the embodiment of the father in human form, why didn't he just let Lazarus die and stay dead? Why didn't he say, well, you know, this sickness is from God or whatever that ain't what the Lord said, because it's not from God. This situation was being allowed to happen because God was going to pull some glory out of it. But the glory out of it is bringing back Lazarus from the dead. That's why so many Christians looking at me right now. You've been chronically sick. That's not the will of God. You've been dealing with stuff because you've been accepting stuff from the devil. You don't understand that God is trying to put some glory out of that situation. But we're going to find out later on in the verses. You got to bring your faith up to that level. That's the problem. Not what the devil is doing and not what the Lord wants to do. Is it your faith ain't where it needs to be? Because it's always your faith that makes you whole. <clears throat> they uh, told Jesus, he said, let's go back to J Judea. And his friends, his disciples asked the Lord, why are we going back there? Because not too long ago, they tried to stone you. Why would you go back there? And then the Lord gave him a parable about walking in light 
and they wouldn't stumble because they see by the light. Part of what that means is Jesus was like that everybody that's with me, that's on my program, that's on my mission with me, they see me, they get it. And the Lord is like, I'm not worried about them blind people that don't get it because they'll be stumbling around. They don't even know what they're talking about. Okay. And then he, he tried to speak, him and speak to them in a parable again and said, Lazarus had gone to sleep. But they thought literally he meant sleep. And the Lord's like, okay, he's dead, but I'm going to wake him up. Pay very careful attention to what happens next. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus, Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Mary and Martha to comfort them in the loss of their brother. So in other words, it was the professional mourners. It was, you know, how people come over to your house at a funeral. So... Jewish people sit shiva. That's their uh, uh, that's their ceremony for when there's been a loss. So they came to sit with Mary and Martha. When Martha heard that the Lord was coming, she went out to meet him on the outskirts of the town. Jesus hadn't even gotten in the village yet, and Martha ran out to where he was. But what did Martha say? Martha said, "If you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask." And then the Lord said, "Your brother will rise again." Then Martha says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. That ain't what the Lord is not what the Lord was talking about. Do you see where Martha's head was? Martha believed the big, broad strokes about Messiah. She believed the big picture about Messiah. But the Lord said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. So in other words, the Lord says, even when your body goes back to the ground, you are still alive. And when you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. You ain't going to never see hell. And then Jesus said, do you believe this? And then Martha answered globally. She said, I believe that you are the Messiah, the son of God who is coming to the world. That's not what the Lord asked her. The Lord asked her, do you believe in the resurrection? Do you believe that I'm the resurrection, that you talk about an event on the last day, but the Lord said that event is actually a person. It's me. I'm the life. The Lord was saying, and he said, if you believe in me, you live. He said, do you believe that? And she didn't answer that question because she's still thinking globally. Her faith is not where it needs to be. That's what I'm trying to get you to see. Then I'm going to show you something very interesting. <clears throat> after she said, after she had that conversation with Jesus, she went back and uh, told Mary, called Mary to the side in the midst of all the morning and said that the Lord is here, the teacher is here, the rabbi is here and is asking for you. So Mary bounced and said, all right, I'm out. And she ran out. She said, I'm out to all the people. And she ran out to where the Lord was. And the Lord still wasn't in the village, but at the place where Martha met him. And so when all the mourners saw how quickly Mary got out the house, they followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb. Mary got to the place where Jesus was and she fell at his feet, but then she said this. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. That is, yeah, that is word for word what Martha said. What does that tell you? These women both had, women both had the same confession. Their faith wasn't where it needed to be. They both were at that same level of confession that we believe you could have prevented his death from the sickness. So if you had come when we called you, then Lazarus wouldn't be dead now because you could have stopped him from dying. But like the Lord explained to Martha, the Lord was like, no, I'm the resurrection. I'm the one that brings people back. I'm the one that gives people life. I'm the one that pulls life out of death. And even if your body lays down, I can bring it back. And if you believe in me, you ain't never going to hell. You ain't gonna never die. You ain't gonna never perish, that's John 3, 16. And then the Lord asked Martha, do you believe that? That's what the Holy Ghost is saying to those of you that have ears to hear what's being said right now. Because what the Lord is saying is that you need to believe that I'm able to pull you up higher than you thought. If your life is dead, if your life is four days dead, if your life is four days dead and stinking, you might not, you might have enough faith to believe that at the end of the age, when God ends the world, that he's going to resurrect you then. 
What the Holy Ghost is trying to get you to understand is that Jesus is saying, I'm able to resurrect you now. But Lord, I messed up. But Lord, I'm a dead man. Lord, my life is four days dead. Lord, my life is so dead, it stinks. It's rotting. It's rotten. The Lord is trying to demonstrate to you here through Mary and Martha's confession that they believe the big global things about Jesus. They believe the broad strokes. And the Lord was saying, no, I'm better than that. I'm more than that. I got more power than you think I do. I'm not talking about a future event. I'm talking about, I can bring it back right now. That's what the Holy Ghost is saying to those of you that have ears to hear. That some of you only have broad stroke faith. Some of you only have general faith, but the Lord is saying, I can raise your life back from a life that's dead, that's even been dead for a minute, and even so dead it sinks. The Lord said, I can bring you all the way back. I can lift you higher than you think I can. And the Lord says, that's going to happen right now. <clears throat> Verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And where have you laid him? He asked, come and see, they replied. Uh, Jesus wept, shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Lot in there. First of all, I asked the Lord, because people have speculated over and over and over again about why Jesus cried. So I asked the Lord, why, why did you cry? Why were you moved? And the Lord said, with compassion. So in other words, when the Lord saw one of his best friends, because the Lord was tight with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, and when the Lord saw her grief, and when he saw all the Jews that had come along with her, they cried, the Lord, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. In other words, they touched the heart of the Lord. The principle is that when you are going through something that has you weeping and crying, you touch the heart of Christ. And I know sometimes because of pride, Sometimes we don't want to hear that because sometimes we're blaming God. But you don't understand like that first principle I gave you, that this situation is being allowed because God's going to pull some glory out of it. OK, not because God want to leave, wants to leave you in it. The devil brought something and God allowed it to happen because he's going to get the glory by reversing the whole situation. But the pain of it is still going to affect you. And the Lord says when he sees that, he weeps. He's moved with compassion. He feels what you're feeling. He's sad when you're sad. He's hurting when you're hurting. Many times we don't preach to Jesus like that. And then some of them said, could, he, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? So you're always going to have them folks that's flapping their gums. Okay. But you see where the level of faith was until the next verse. Because God doesn't move until it's faith that's on a level it, it needs to be. What do I mean by that? I, I've, I find myself having to explain this concept over and over and over because it's been taught so poorly for so long. Faith is a substance. Faith is like muscles. So if you think about the muscles in your body, if you work out, you're in better shape than people that don't. If you do pull-ups and you get used to pulling up the weight of your body off the ground, you got more upper body strength than people that don't do that. Well, faith is like spirit muscles. Faith is like muscles, but in the spirit. So in other words, if I'm going in the gym and I'm trying to bench press something and I haven't been working out, I then I won't be able to lift that weight. Well, when you have a problem where the power of God needs to manifest, if you haven't been feeding your faith with a steady diet of the word of God, with a steady infilling of the spirit of God, with being around people of faith, then you won't have the spiritual muscles to lift the problem off you and rebuke it. That's, that's the analogy I'm trying to get you to see. That if you haven't been working out and you need to lift something, if you had developed your muscles, you might be able to lift it. But because you haven't been working out, you don't have the strength you need to lift that. Well, faith is spirit muscles. 
So that means when the devil or life is presenting you with a problem, for you to get the victory that you want to get, you have to believe God on that level to trigger the manifestation and the release of his power. So if Satan hits you at a level seven problem in your life, your faith is at a level three. What that means in no uncertain terms is that you are going to have to build your faith up from a level three to a level seven, and then you can rebuke the devil. You can meet the devil at the level he hits you on and push him back out your life. And if you don't do that, you might die early or Satan just might beat up on you because your faith ain't strong enough, high enough to meet him at where he hit you. Do you follow all that? That's what a lot of people don't get. So when people react like Job did in the Bible, they just sit down and say, oh, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. That's religious people that don't have no relationship. That's why Job suffered for so long, because Job had to get his faith up till he realized Job had to stop trusting in himself and realize that he couldn't stand against the devil in his own name. Then he had a vision from the Lord and he saw God and Job realized that he was self-righteous and he confessed from all that and realized that the only righteousness comes from God. And when Job got there, then his fortunes were reversed because now he had the faith to believe that that's why it happened. So Mary and Martha and the people were at the same level of faith because they confessed the same thing. They said, if Jesus had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And the crowd said that Jesus opened the eyes of the blind man so he could have kept Lazarus from dying. That's where they head was. Jesus was trying to challenge, challenge them to a high level of faith. That's why the Lord said to his 12, I'm glad I wasn't there. I'm like, why are you glad you weren't there? Because he was trying to get them to come up to see that I'm not just able to stop Lazarus from dying. I'm able to bring Lazarus back after he died. So what triggered, what triggered, what triggered enough faith for the Lord to do the miracle, I'm about to show you. Uh, John 11:38. 38, Jesus once more deeply moved with compassion, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. That's the same kind of tomb they buried Jesus in, by the way. And the Lord said these words in verse 39, he said, take away the stone. Here come Martha with her but Lord. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man. By this time, there's a bad odor, for he has been there four days. What does that mean to your life? Hear me. Hear what the Spirit is saying, what I'm about to say. The Lord is saying, you've been complaining to God that I have messed up so badly, or I've messed up for so long that my life is stinking. So what are we going to do with that? I've been in that grave for so long. I've been down so long. There's one song that said, I've been down so long that down don't bother me. And there's another thought that says, I've been down so long, I don't remember what up is like. <laughs> don't you know some people haven't laughed in so long, they forgot what laughter was like. Some people haven't been happy in so long, they forgot what it's like to be happy. So here come Martha with her faith, because the devil gave them a, a problem level seven. And here come Martha with her faith level three. Talking about, but Lord, talking about the circumstances. He, he been dead, he, he been there four days and is a bad odor. You take away that stone, you do all that, you know, fooling, you're fooling with a corpse. The Holy Ghost is trying to get you to see that some of y'all have been complaining before God that your mistakes stink because mistakes do stink, but they stink so greatly and that your life has been four days dead until we don't need to be worried about all that, because you think God isn't bigger than the stench of your mistakes. That's you coming with your faith level three, trying to say that God is not bigger than something that stinks, that God is not bigger than something that might be stinking in your life. How did the Lord respond to her Verse 40, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you what? If you believe, if you what? If you believe, if you what? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. In other words, 
hear me, hear what the spirit is saying. God is trying to tell you he's ready to do a resur resurrection miracle in your life that's greater than the fact that you were dead, the fact that you were four days dead, and the fact that you were four days dead and stinking. The Lord is saying that your mistakes, he's bigger than your mistakes. He's bigger than the odor that your mistakes caused. He's bigger than however long you've been in that tomb. And he said, did I not tell you that if you believe, he was talking to Martha about the here and now, you will see the glory of God. Right now. Here comes the answer in verse 41. Verse 41 starts out by saying, so they took away the stone. That was it. That was the act of faith that released the Lord to do what he had wanted to do. I stopped by to tell you that if them people had not taken away the stone, the Lord would not have caused Lazarus, called Lazarus out of his grave. They would have shut down the miracle that God was trying to give them because of their unbelief, because they kept saying that the situation was greater than what God can handle. What I'm, <laughs> what the Holy Ghost is trying to get you to understand is that that's what some of y'all been saying to the Lord. But the key is to do what the Lord told you to do. He told them to take away the stone. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, I want you to notice, Jesus didn't look up and pray to the Father until after they took the stone away. Why? Because it required an act of faith for the Lord's power to be released for them, for somebody to say, even though we're at a level three and the problem is at a level seven, we believe you that you are greater than that level seven. So we're going to go on away and take away the stone. We're going to go ahead and take away the stone. That means some of y'all, God's going to tell you something today or this week that's going to be a take away the stone type commandment. The Lord's going to tell you to do something. And the Lord does not want you to respond by saying, I've, I've been dead for so long. I've been dead for four days and I stink. God does not want you to bring any of that up. God wants you to take away the stone. Then Jesus looked up verse 41 and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. What does that mean? That means what Jesus said earlier in the chapter, that everything that was allowed to happen with Lazarus was to increase the faith of all who saw the miracle and that they might believe on the name of the Son of God. In other words, God is trying to give those of you that are in very tough situations, he's trying to give you comfort. He's trying to tell you that the situation, though it looks bad, though it's been going on for a long time, and though it stinks, the reason it was allowed was because God is going to bring some next level glory out of it. One more time, even though the situation has got you crying, even though the situation has got you heartbroken, even though you're weeping so much until it makes the Lord weep with compassion for you. And even though your faith is at a level three, you say, well, God could have stopped all this. The Lord is trying to say that the situation was allowed to happen and continue because God is going to get some next level. God did not want a level three glory out of it. God did not want to give you a level three blessing out of it. You are already at a level three. God is trying to give you a level seven blessing out of it to show you that he's bigger than everything in your life that's been dead, that's been four days dead and stinking, and that he can give you a resurrection over on top of even all that going on. But you wouldn't see that God could do stuff like that and you wouldn't have that level of faith unless the situation had been allowed to play out like it's played out. So this passage of scripture actually prophetically is trying to encourage you to tell you that even though you're in a situation that hurts so bad, you're weeping. God, What God is doing, because you wanted him to stop it before it happened, that would have been a level three. Jesus already proved he could do that. Jesus already proved he could heal sick people. He'd already done that. But now 
he was trying to get them up to level seven and said, no, I can raise dead people. See, I, it's not just a me healing sick people. I can actually raise dead people. He was trying to bring, give Mary and Martha and Lazarus that level of blessing and cause everybody that saw it to have that level of faith. And God can't get a level seven, seven blessing out of a level three situation. So God lets the devil push the situation until it's a level seven. And we're weeping and crying and worried. And Lord, you could have stopped this. And why didn't you get here sooner? All the different kind of stuff is because he's trying to get that level of glory out of it. That's why. Hear me. Hear what the Spirit is saying. John eleven forty three. 43. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Good God Almighty. Okay. You understand what the scripture just told you? What did the scripture just tell you? The scripture said, the Lord raised his voice. The Lord called in a loud voice. That means it's going to be a loud blessing in front of everybody. That God ain't going to whisper this one. Because, you know, sometimes when the Lord talks, he talks with that still small voice saying, God, this is not going to be a whisper blessing. He said, Lazarus, come out. He called him by name. Now, I've heard all my life people say if he had just said, come forth, everybody would have got up, which is probably true. If Jesus had just said, come forth, all the dead people in the ground would have been, oh, that's Jesus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. But that means the blessing has your name on it. <laughs> the Lord going to call your name in a loud voice. Then he said, the dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. What does that represent? That represents you still dragging that old stuff with you. Feeling guilty about past stuff, still rehearsing mistakes, still heavy in your heart about stuff that's long dead. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Take off the grave clothes because you're not going to be in the grave anymore and let him go. Let him go. Get out of all that. What God is trying to say that the Lord is about to bless you and bless your name and bless your life until they start renaming cities after you. You about to get a glow up. That's like stuff you didn't imagine. Your whole mind about to be blown. But what happens next? Verse 45. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then said the chief priests and the Pharisees, then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. That was the governing body for the Jewish people, the Sanhedrin council. And verse 53, so from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Verse 54, therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the wilderness to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. Do you understand what that means? That means the Lord is fit to give some of y'all so much of a glow up until you're going to get famous. And you got to get ready to deal with everything that comes along with that new level of fame. Why is that so important? Because in John 12 and 9, just the next chapter over, uh, <clears throat> meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews learned that Jesus was there, meaning back in Bethany. And they came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. That is John chapter 12, verse 9. One more time. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews learned that Jesus was there, back in Bethany. And they came not only because of him, but also, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. People are going to very all of a sudden get very interested in you because of the way the Lord is going to raise you to the point where people just won't be singing out Jesus. They're going to want to see you because the Lord brought you out of deadness. And what that means is that you're going to have a level of fame. And what that means is that you're going to have to get ready by what come with that fame because back in John chapter 11, it said that. Many of the Jews who saw what Jesus did believed in him, verse 46. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Some of them folks that see your miracle, that see a resume, res, resurrection mural, 
going straight to your enemies, going straight to the people that oppose you, going straight to the media, going straight to run their mouth about he rose that is from the dead. And then they called the council. And then, so I'm not going to read everything they said in the council, but verse 53 says, from that day on, they plotted to take his life. They plotted to take Jesus out. Death threats. Haven't you ever heard somebody say they've been online or they've been on TV and something happened and they get death threats? Because all of a sudden their profile has been raised. Now you all got there out there, people hating on you on that level. And then he says that Jesus, therefore, no longer moved publicly among the people of Judea. Some people get so famous until they can't walk out on the streets no more. They can't just walk among their folks no more. Some people are going to get a glow up on that level to where you got to deal with the fame of where you are now versus where you were before the Lord spoke your name and called you out of a grave. Good God Almighty. So today's prophetic word is loose him. So let's do a quick review. The miracle of Lazarus's resurrection from the dead was so powerful that they renamed the entire village after Lazarus. The city that was called Bethany in the Bible today in 2021 is called El Azaria or El Azaria, which means the place of Lazarus. Because the impact of the Lord bringing that man back from the dead, remember that Lazarus is not the only person that Jesus raised from the dead because he raised Jairus' daughter and he raised some other people. But the impact of him raising Lazarus was so profound until they changed the name of the city. And when God gives you that kind of bless blessing, it's going to change the name of streets and cities and towns and villages. Point principles number two is that when God is allowing something to happen, God is saying it's not going to have a sad ending. I'm going to pull some glory out of this. That's the first thing he said. OK, uh, next principle. That God, uh, when stuff like that happens, God is anticipating what he's going to do because he's going to raise your faith level. Next principle. Where was Mary and Martha and most of the people? They were at the level of their confession. If you had been here, Lazarus would have died. Principle is people believe God can prevent stuff. But that's a level three level of faith. And God said, I'm after a level seven blessing for you. And I'm after a level seven of glory for myself. So I allowed the situation to play out the way it did, because I'm going to give you a blessing that's way higher than what you thought. But if they were at that level three of faith, what was it that moved Jesus to do the miracle? What moved Jesus to do the miracle was the next principle when he told them to take away the stone. If they hadn't taken away the stone, then the Lord wouldn't have said Lazarus come out. You have to give God an act of faith. You have to do what the Lord is telling you to do. If the Lord is telling you to do something that seems crazy or looks crazy or just look like it's just all out the box of what you need to be doing, do it anyway. Because the act of faith is what God responds to. And by that act of faith, you're showing the Lord, even though everything I thought was at level three, I believe you are bigger than this situation. And because they took away the stone, Notice the Lord didn't pray until they took away the stone. And then when he did, next principle, the Lord said, Lazarus, come out in a loud voice. The Lord's going to raise his voice. See, things happen when God raised his voice. The Lord is going to raise his voice and call you by name. And whatever grave you've been in, he's bigger than being dead, four days dead, and stinking. He's going to call you by name. He's going to call you out of obscurity, out of a grave, out of a life that you thought was never going to be nothing. And when that happens, the Lord said, you might come out with uh, hand, your hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around your face. Those are grave clothes. So the next thing Jesus said was take the grave clothes off. Take off the grave clothes. God is saying that if you've been carrying your past around with you, it's time to take that off and let him go. Be loose from that. You don't have to carry that no more because God is fitting to resurrect you at a higher level. All right. Uh, final principle or, or the principle right out of that is some folks are going to see that and believe and some people are going to see that and run their mouth to your enemies. One more time. Some people are going to see what God does for your life and believe and some people are going to go run their mouth to people that they know don't like you and people that are standing against you. 
So the Lord is saying, you're going to have to learn how to take what come along with that new level of fame. Okay. Once he pulls you out of obscurity, once he pulls you out of deadness, there's going to be a new level of fame because some of it is going to be so powerful. You change the city behind you. They renamed it after Lazarus. And then uh, the Lord said he no longer moved about publicly among the people of Judea. See, it was that miracle. It was that miracle that gave Jesus such a level of fame that he couldn't openly walk around the folks anymore, even though he'd done other stuff like that before. It was that one that was the life changer for him to the point where he could just be out and about among the people because the Lord sure loved to walk among the people because the Lord loves us. He sure loved to walk among the people, but he could no longer just be out and about anymore once he put Lazarus out the grave. So the Lord is saying, you've got to get ready for the way your life is going to change once he gives you that resurrection call. All right. Amen and amen. That word blessed my heart and that word absolutely blessed my life. Amen. And amen. So let me see if the Holy Ghost has anything else to say. Okay. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, no way. All right. There's something I have to say. Hold on. For behold, my people, I've called you to resurrection power. For behold, my people, I've called you to a resurrection level. Behold, my people, I have called you to a resurrection day. I am the level. I am the power. I am the day. So get ready for me to flood your life with the resurrection power and raise you. And even though that situation You've been wrestling with for a long time. There's been long dead and long stinking. I'm about to bring you out of it in such a way until it's going to impact the world around you in a way that you've never seen before. And you will open your mouth and give me the glory in all things so people will know it was me, says the spirit of the living God. Wow and wow. Amen and amen. All right. So this Thursday coming up is the second Thursday. That means it's time for the next installment of No More Genies. Okay, that exact date is Thursday, August. Wait, let me put on the calendar. Everything always runs slow when you're trying to. Okay, that is Thursday, August 12th. That's this Thursday. So that's No More Genies, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to be here for. Uh, the No More Genies broadcast where we talk about uh, getting rid of our genie concept of God and getting into what scripture actually says. That's this Thursday, Thursday, August 12th at 7 p.m. I will be back next Sunday, August 15th at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for my regular weekly live prophetic word. All right. Amen and amen. God bless. I'm encouraged and inspired by that word and I'm going with it and I'm moving forward and I pray God that you do the same. All right. Amen. God bless. Thank you so much to those of you that watch me live on Facebook, those of you that watch me live on Insta, and those of you that are watching the replay, and also those of you that are watching the YouTube video. God bless. Thank you so much. I'll see you Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next installment of No More Genies, and I'll see you next Sunday for the next weekly live prophetic word. Amen. And God bless. And remember, it's time for a resurrection miracle.